But whenever we make sales on receivables, we're running a risk that they don't actually pay the money because we already did the work. So if you're working with like, you know, dishonest people or something like that, uh, then it's likely that that you that you're going to have a, some portion of your receivables that you're never going to basically collect on. So then, so then, so this can help you to estimate what that is the portion you're not going to collect on. And at some point, if you have a lot in like over 90 days that are uncollected, you have to you have to cut your losses and let it go and possibly write it off if you're using a direct method uh, or or an indirect, but it's a different write off method. If you're using a, an, an allowance method of recording accounts receivable, the concept there, which usually happens for larger businesses, because it's a little bit more difficult to deal with. But the concept is, if I recorded revenue based on a sale, and I know that some of those revenue items are not going to be collected because just of past history, I, if I know like 10% of my revenue isn't going to be collected, the revenue on account, the revenue that I sold with accounts receivable, I'm not going to collect on it. Well, then the sale didn't really happen kind of, right? So, I, so what I should be doing is recording the expense, bad debt expense, in the same point in time that I made the revenue sale if I could. But I can't really do that because I don't know how much revenue or how many, I don't know who's not going to pay. I just have a pretty good idea based on past history that some people will not pay like 10%, let's say, or whatever, based on our calculations, based on the calculations from this report. Uh, and so what we're going to do then is say that is, is write, write it off already and then create an allowance account uh, under the accounts receivable for the amount of accounts receivable we don't expect to collect on. And that makes the, the balance sheet look more clean or be more fair or proper because instead of having 5,281.52 as an asset, it should really be that amount minus the amount that we pretty sure we're not going to collect on even though we don't know who the deadbeats are yet, right? That aren't going to pay. So, so, and then when we, then when we write it off, we write it off to the, so that's the allowance method. You might use this report for that as well. We have a course on accounts receivable and allowance method. If that's an interesting topic you want to dig into in more detail. Uh, a lot of small businesses might not do it that way because of course it's tedious to do, but you can see why for external reporting purposes, it would be uh, a useful tool and it's generally accepted accounting principles typically. Okay. So then if we go into, oh, by the way, if I go back on over here, you have some formatting options. So you've got your active cells, uh, you've got the aging uh, report dates, you can change the days per aging period if you wanted to. But this is pretty standard. So like this is usually standardized to some degree. But if you're using this for the calculation of allowance for doubtful account or something like that, you might want different periods uh, that might help you for your calculations and you can change those up top. All right, let's go back on over. We have the last one we'll look at, the accounts receivable aging detail, right-clicking, opening that one up, and we'll check it out. So I'm gonna change the date up top. This is gonna be uh, 123123, run it to refresh it. So there we have it. So now, instead of having the columns up top, the uh, times past due, because we want to see the invoices detail, we have the drop down here. So now we've got the drop down here for the 30 to 60 days. And then it gives us the specific invoices and you can see the different customers within it. And then we've got uh, the one to 30. Again, here's your categories. Uh, uh, I'm sorry, the 31 to 60. This is 31 to 60. This is the one to 30. And then the current is on the bottom of this one. So more detailed report. So you might use these in conjunction with each other. You might look at this report and then think about, okay, let me look at these specific invoices that are in this category or like these overdue categories. Where's that $85, that specific invoice. If there were multiple items in there, it might be a little difficult to drill down on there. You can go over here and, fig and find it here. You can drill down on it here. You could also drill down on it here Right, and that's gonna give you your, your detail uh, as well, which you can further drill down on within here, right? So that's the general, and that takes you to the invoice. So that's the general uh, idea of the uh, aging reports. Accounts receivable for a larger business. 
is going to be has could have a whole department trying to collect on those trying to collect on those accounts receivable get the allowance accounts re reported uh properly and making sure everything's nice and clean in uh that account as well as the sub ledgers and all the customers are as happy as they can be uh while hopefully paying us what they owe us 